Longtime Oliver Palm City Council member and entrepreneur Ryan Buck Hannon tells me exclusively that he plans to run for mayor of the city of Oliver Palms. I speak exclusively with Ryan for this edition of Quentin's Close Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close Ups on Facebook. Ryan Buck Hannon, welcome back to the award winning Quentin's Close Ups. Hey, thanks for having me, Quentin. It's always a pleasure to meet up with you. Oh, I appreciate it greatly. Obviously, you're a business owner, entrepreneur, and of course, a current uh, Olive Palm City Council member. Let me take you to the obvious because the Olive Palm Street Festival movie uh, and an annual holiday event originally scheduled for December 5th has obviously been canceled due to COVID. Uh, instead of instruments, amusements, that is, food trucks, live music, arts and crafts vendors, and outdoor movie and curbside tents set up by local restaurants, the Olive Palm's Recreation Department is coordinating a drive through Santa's Lane at Front Beach so the children can drop off there and drop off their letters to Santa Claus, according to uh, the Alva Palmas officials. How many outdoor movies and curbside tents will there be? Uh, well, that's a good question. The thing is, is we um, I hate to say that we canceled it. I'd like, I'd, I'd like to say that we modified. Okay. The event. <laughs> given, given the circumstances of COVID and trying to cut down on group gatherings and those who have concerns of it, uh, the recreation department did a great job. Uh, with coming up with an alternative to it, although I'd like to have seen, you know, this, you know, uh, the event, and you know, everybody get out there and enjoy a good time and support the local restaurants that need it, and you know, definitely need it. Um, I think this is a good alternative, and we still encourage folks to get out and um, support those businesses down in Front Beach. Yes, indeed, and I know the fate of the street fest festival that is was discussed at the uh, Olive Palm City Council meeting on November seventeenth. But in the end, council members chose not to place the item on the agenda, but instead chose to let the city staff to basically held uh, decide what to do with that particular event. Uh, when did the city staff determine to basically modify the event? It was it was during that event. I think there was some discussion up leading up to um, that city council meeting. Um, from what I can understand about, about the event being modified or canceled. Um, but it was like, we just, you know, like I said, we just voted to try to vote to get discussion on whether or not to have it. And that's what basically ultimately failed. And, you know, I just wanted to have some discussion on it and, um, basically try to try to get council's decision on it. And I guess the balance of council thought it was a better idea for the administration to take the lead on it. What type of discussion is the community having about the now modified event? It's mixed, as with everything that goes along with COVID. Um, so it's, you know, a lot of folks are, uh, you know, praising the recreation department and coming up with a modification to the event. And um, we just like, again, we just we encourage, the, you know, folks to get out and, you know, take part in this drive through and meet Santa and a little candy stand and support our front beach businesses. Yes, yes, indeed. What is the state of those businesses right now, as you know, Ryan? Well, actually, they're doing. <clears throat> I get down and talk with them frequently. Um, they get down. They're they're doing fairly well. Um, obviously, it's nothing compared to what it has been in the past. But given the circumstances, they're doing okay. Um, they're really concerned about um, what's coming up with New Year's and you know bars and restaurants not being being to be open for New Year's Eve. And um, so and that that in itself is going to um, present a problem for them as well. And as we said here right now, are there any increases or decreases in COVID cases on the Alva Palms? It's, we just like every everywhere else, I mean, you get a couple of cases that pop up, um, and then and I forget how many we've had cumulatively since since the beginning of the virus. Maybe like one fifty six cumulative. Um, there's always a few active cases out here, um, but everybody out here, you know, it's. Um, they're doing a great job in complying with the ordinances and the mandates that are handed down both, you know, from the state and within the city. City. And the emergency ordinance parking restrictions, let's talk about that because the Alpha Palm City Council in this meeting uh, recently removed all of the prior emergency ordinance parking rec restrictions, that is. Parking as it was what was before the COVID situation were put in place. Uh, parking is also now free on the Alpha Palm's front reach 24-7. And as a note, the city's administrator did say that they could reinstate parking restrictions in the spring if needed. Uh, the other restrictions face my mass require, no live music after 11 p.m., etc., are still in effect mm -hmm. until at least uh, the January 17th. Let me ask right. you this. How would have the city documented safety concerns for validating not parking on the land side of Palm Boulevard if they kept it closed in the winter uh, persuading to the emergency COVID orders? 
That, Quentin, that's a great question. I mean, there's really no way to validate, you know, whether parking, eliminating parking on one side of the street, you know, decreases the chance of catching COVID. Um, so there's, in, in the idea of the administration um, bringing it back up, you know, in the spring, that hasn't been discussed within council as well. So um, I, I don't foresee that happening um, anytime soon. And um, I think the uh, the state has something to say about that. While the Olive Palms is has the ability to manage parking, it's been made abundantly clear through the state in the SCDOT in the in up there in Columbia. We we really don't have the ability to eliminate parking, and that's one thing we're gonna have to work with and working with you know local governments um, throughout the tri county area and trying to find ways to make you know access to the beach safe and accessible. Now that residents can park on the landslide side, that is at Palm Boulevard, is perpendicular or parallel parking actually legal? Yeah, so it's not just residents that are allowed. I mean, all residents um, are, all, all residents of South Carolina are, are, so you don't have to be a resident, you know, to be parking there, but anybody can park on either side of the street along Palm Boulevard. So yes, as, for, um, as for parallel and perpendicular parking, the SCDOT, um, regulates which ways traffic and parking should be. And um, they they made that recommendation to switch everything over to parallel parking years ago. And going forth, if the state wants to manage parking on the state right away, uh, should the state pay for its upkeep, Ryan? Um, I, I, I broke up just for a second there, Quentin. Can you repeat that question? Oh, no worries. Yeah, going forth, if the state of South Carolina wants to manage parking on the state right away on the Oliver Palms, should the state pay for its upkeep in your mind? Uh, definitely, yeah, and we we had um we have been pursuing the state, trying to manage and um, try to stabilize the roads of Palm Boulevard. It's really fallen on deaf ears over for many years, and um, with the there's an advocacy group outside um in Charleston, the beach um beach uh, beach um parking group. Um, they've done a great job in getting the state to step up and do their part in reaching out and actually enforcing a lot of the, the problems that we've had um, with DOT for, for years now. And what are those other problems that you all have been dealing with when it comes to obviously DOT? Well, it comes down to, well, we have a lot of um, the rights of way are not managed well. You know, the city has been going through and utilizing city tax dollars to help stabilize the shoulders, help um, and try to increase the, the parking and make it safe. Um, DOT, but every time we have to do that, we have to go through DOT to get permit, get regulations um, because of the regulations. If DOT can come in and help stabilize the shoulders, make parking safe for everybody to get out here, and help to remove a lot of the, um, the, the improvements that were made or a lot of the obstructions and the rights of way, um, which we've been trying to do for some time. So DOT is actually moving forward now in uh, working towards uh, eliminating some of those obstructions in our rights way. And you talk about those shoulders, how much of that tax money was used towards that? Well, I don't have that in front of me right now. I mean, we allocate um, probably, I mean, we use a, a contractor to come in and dump sand, help stabilize the shoulders. It's not, I mean, it's thousands of dollars, but still it's just the idea that the city's you know, going through and trying to stabilize those shoulders in certain areas. And you talk about sand, you talk about obviously the problems on the Alva Palms. Let me ask you this mm -hmm. about beach erosion. What approach will mm -hmm. council look at as far as mitigating potential beach loss due to erosion next time? Well, we're going to continue. We've, uh, we we put together a, a it's part in the, the pun, but a sinking fund where we go through and put money away for um, beach renourishment every year. And it's, it's similar to our, you know, our, our beach, it's called our beach preservation fund. And that helps to um, offset the cost of those those projects. And what projects are, and obviously money that you all have obviously put aside and offset as far as projects? Well, it's not only just the city. Um, Wild Dunes is a large stakeholder within any any project that we have. And a lot of the erosion is in the north end of the island. As with any island, it all occurs mostly in the north end. Um, they're a large stakeholder in this. And they put up you know, millions, you know, tens of millions of dollars um, in order to stabilize 
the, the, the beach in their area as well. And this might be an uh, interesting question, Ryan, but uh, Norsham, okay, obviously the beach in Norsham at, at, uh, is happening all over. Uh, how would Norsham, Norsham and that is at the private gated section of the Alva Palms Wild Dune, uh, how would they be able to receive any money from Norsham from the state and federal government? Right. So the nourishment area extends from the north end of the island um, down south. And the way the state regulated it or the state justified it was, you know, the, the funds could not, state funds could not be used within the, uh, the private wild dunes area. That's why wild dunes had to um, put up so much money in order to, re, you know, um, basically subsidize the nourishment in that area. Um, so there was a large section outside Wild Dunes that needed to be renourished as well, and that's that's where they're saying the state the state money and county um, funds went to. Okay, and let me turn over to the Alpha Palms Marina Waterfront Park. As you know, on September 22nd, City Council voted to create a public dock and green space in the space forming lease to the commercial water sports operation. And our resident and landscape architect offered his services pro bono to develop a first draft draft that is of a conceptual plan for the Alva Ponds Waterfront Park. The plan covers the 300 linear feet by 25 foot wide area along the bulk of the marina area facing the intercoastal waterway. The implementation of this vision will require collaboration and participation from the marina manager and restaurant tenants. Let me ask you this Ryan, would the city have to take away parking from some of those tenants? No, not at all. Basically okay. the green space would have to um, green space would encompass the areas of where tidal wave parking used to be. Um, we have the other tenants down there, um, both the restaurateur, the marina operations, and the, um, the, the store operations. They're, they're encouraged by the walkway that would surround the area. There may be some modifications to the parking. Uh, um, yeah, we're, we, parking is um, it, uh, obviously an issue in that area because it is a set you know footprint and there's no way to expand it so we just have to utilize it the best way we can and what exactly are those modifications well we're just going through and trying to you know right now it's been a gravel um parking lot forever it's hard to keep striped it's hard to keep lined it's hard to organize all the time um and that's really it we just have to, the marina manager has to stay on top of it um the city has to stay on top of it just trying to um facilitate you know, the best parking that we can have down there and um, try to try to make that marina a destination area to help them because it's not just the front beach businesses that need the support. It's, you know, it's going to be the restaurants in that area. It's, it's the, it's the, the marina saltworks deli in um, the, in the marina store and the marina docks and the areas and those folks down there that we'd like to get our residents down there and really make it a destination place for our residents to go to as well as anybody. But a lot of our folks like to ride their bikes up there, like the golf cart up there, like to hang out with their children. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. And before I let you go, <laughs> uh, this might be an interesting question because I was just reading it in the paper. But obviously, there, the city of Alpha Palms and its residents will be actually electing a new mayor in the, in the future. Do you foresee yourself becoming mayor? You know, I've, I've talked to a lot of folks about this. And when I was running for state house right. a while ago in real life because of COVID, um, and the, the problems that the city was, was dealing with, I, I really felt my heart was here on the Isle of Palms and, um, and that's why. And, and, you know, I haven't really announced anywhere publicly. I've, I've, I've told folks that, you know, I plan on pursuing it, but with, for, for you, Quentin, I'll go ahead and say, you know, yeah, I'm planning on running for mayor this, this next, this next year. And, uh, we, cause we really need somebody who can work well with, you know, Charleston County, Mount Pleasant, Sullivan's Island, and all the other municipal governments in the area to try to manage traffic, you know, try to manage our flooding, try to manage infrastructure. And I believe I'm the person that can do that. And what else would be in your plan, in your 25-year vision plan for the city of Alpha Palms? <laughs> well, like I said, it's, it, one of our biggest issues is just the growth of the Tri-County area and try to Everybody talks about the, this uh, quality of life issue, and it's, it's, it really needs to be a, a number one um, issue for not just residents out here in the Isle of Palms, but for folks who want to come and visit 
You know, the beach is a quality of life, but we need to make it safe for everybody to get here. We need to make it accessible. And we need to, you know, I, I really want to continue to work on our drainage infrastructure. You know, sea level rise and other issues that we're having, you know, it's, we're a barrier island and we, we're dealing with that every day in, you know, the high tides. And we've had super high tides this year. And yes, it, it's, it, it, those are things we need to work on. And what is that? Uh, what is the state of that drainage infrastructure as you know it? Well, I've been counseling long enough to we're on phase three right now and four mm -hmm. of, of our drainage infrastructure. And I remember starting phase one all the way up in near Wild Dunes and working our way down. So, you know, this it's a it's a big project, and we just need to continue work on it. It's a multi multi million dollar project, and um, we just need to try to alleviate some of the flooding and drainage issues that we have. And the city in the in this council has done a great job pursuing that and making it making it work. We have projects going on right now in um, Long Waterway, so it's it's something we need to continue to work on. I, you know, and whether it's, you know next five years, next twenty five years, it's always going to be a problem. But so is parking. We need to work with that, and um, there, in, as well as just trying to keep the the financial order, our financial house in order. Here. Ryan Buckhannon, thank you so much for your time, and again. Welcome back to the award-winning Quentin Skolsups. Thanks for having me. Anytime, Quentin. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it.